We need to be able to do some mathematical calculations on gases. And so we need to define some properties of gases. And one of the most important properties of a gas is its pressure. So pressure is the force exerted on a container wall by the colliding gas particles. So let's unpack that statement just a little bit. Pressure is a force. So there are all kinds of forces in the universe. So I'm going to give you an example of a force. Here's my calculator, and my calculator has a certain amount of mass to it. And if I take my finger and I push, I put some pressure there, some tension there, I am applying a force to the side of that calculator. Now the calculator doesn't have to move for me to apply a force to it. All I'm doing is I'm putting some sort of force by pressing on the side of the calculator. If I increase the force, yes, then I can get the calculator to move. But just because the calculator is not moving does not mean I'm not applying a force to it. It just means that the force is not sufficient to overcome its inertia. Well, pressure is like that for a gas as well. So let's go back to our gas container here. When the gas molecules in this container are moving around until they collide with something, one of the things that they can collide with is the side wall of the container. So even though we can't see it or feel it or hear it, there are billions and trillions of gas molecules right now that are bouncing against the inside of this container. And every time a gas molecule bounces off of the inside of this container, it is applying a little bit of force. So even though we don't see the container wall moving, that doesn't mean that there are no forces being applied. The gas molecules themselves are applying forces every time they collide with the container wall. So we call those forces pressure. And there are a number of different units used to measure pressure. One of the units is TOR, T-O-R-R, -R, and there are 760 TOR. Another unit of measurement is the millimeter of mercury, and I'll explain where these two terms come from here. But that is also 760 millimeters of mercury. And another unit of pressure is the atmosphere, as ATM, and that's equal to one atmosphere. And another unit of pressure that you might encounter is the kilopascal, 101, oops, point three kilopascals. So first of all, why do we have so many different units of pressure that we can use? We have the tor, the millimeter of mercury, the atmosphere, the kilopascal. There are others as well that you may have encountered already, like pounds per square inch, PSI. That's a, that's a common one in use. And the answer to why we have so many different units is partly because of the way they were discovered and the way they are being used within particular industries. The ones that we are mainly going to use in this class are tor, millimeters of mercury, and atmospheres. And of these, atmospheres becomes very useful for us later on when we're doing some of our gas calculations. But for now, you need to know how to convert between them. Well, on the back of our periodic table, we've given you some resources. One atmosphere, 760 torr, 760 millimeters of mercury, 101.3 kilopascals. So you have those conversions if you need them. Another thing I'd like to mention here is that there's a term that you might have encountered in your previous chemistry class called STP. It stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. And it is arbitrarily defined to be the standard temperature and pressure when we have a standard temperature at 
zero degrees Celsius, which we know as 273.15 kelvins, and a standard pressure is considered to be one atmosphere. So if you ever see the term STP given to you, they are telling you what the temperature and the pressure are. In your previous chemistry class, you probably did math calculations where you were told that a gas was at STP, at standard temperature and pressure. However, in this class, we're not going to use STP very much because it's just not that practical. We almost never encounter a gas at exactly zero degrees Celsius and exactly one atmosphere. So it's not very helpful to have a special case that we almost never encounter. We don't run experiments generally at STP. We don't live our lives at STP. And so, although you may see it, and you need to be familiar with it, we are probably not going to be using STP very much. Okay, with that in mind, I'd like to give you just a little bit of history about how the term Tor and millimeter of mercury came about and why they are 760. So in the middle of the 1600s, early to middle 1600s, there was a researcher called Torricelli. And he was actually a student of Galileo. And he was engaged in doing some fundamental research on pressure, particularly pressure of gases and liquids. And Torricelli came up with a uh, an interesting experiment. He took a bowl and he filled it almost full with mercury. And then he took a long tube, long glass tube, that was closed on one end, and he filled that with mercury. And then what he did was he took this long tube filled with mercury and he inverted it. He turned it upside down and put the open end under the surface of the liquid mercury. You know, mercury is a metal, but at room temperature and pressure it is a liquid, right? So, after he took that tube filled with mercury and he inverted it into the bowl of mercury, what do you think happened? Do you think all of the mercury fell out? Do you think some of it fell out? Do you think none of it fell out? Well, you may have encountered something like this similarly uh, when you were washing dishes or something. If you take a glass of water and you fill that water full, and then you invert the glass so that the mouth of the glass is under the surface of water, you will find that some water stays in the glass. And that's what Torricelli found. He found that some of the mercury drained out of this tube, but a lot of it remained in the tube. And this was, not, this was not news, this was not some brand new observation. But what Torricelli did was he ran this experiment many times using different heights of the tube, using different diameters of the tubing. And what he found was where he was working, the height of the mercury that was left in the tube was 700 and 60 millimeters tall. So I just want to point out what's happening here. The mercury filled this tube. It was inverted so that the mouth of the tube was in the bowl of mercury. Some of the mercury drained out, but a lot of the mercury stayed in the tube. And the height of that column of mercury in the tube 
was always 760 millimeters. And it didn't matter how tall the tube was to begin with or how wide the tube was. That column of mercury was always 760 millimeters tall. So this puzzled Torricelli. He says, why is it always 760 millimeters? What is so special about that number? And why does the liquid mercury stay in the tube in the first place? Why does it not all drain out? And he came up with a hypothesis. He said, I know about forces from Isaac Newton. I know that if this mercury is resisting the force of gravity to stay in this tube, then there must be some other force that is acting to prevent it from draining out. He said, I th the only force that I can think of is that there must be a force that's pushing down on the surface of this liquid that is preventing it from rising, and that's preventing this mercury from draining out. And as he thought about it, he said, I think the force that is being exerted downward on the surface of that mercury is the force of all the atmospheric gases. So you and I, we breathe air, and air has molecules in it, and those, mo and those molecules have mass. So the atmosphere above us in the sky actually has a mass, and it is pressing down on us right now. And so the atmospheric gases exert a pressure. And that was a very important insight that helped him explain these experimental results. So the atmosphere itself is exerting a downward pressure. And the atmosphere, we could say whatever the atmosphere is, we'll call it one atmosphere, or one ATM, we will say that that pressure that the atmosphere exerts is the same pressure or force required to sustain a column of mercury 760 millimeters tall. And because of his work, Evangelista Torricelli was honored by having the millimeter of mercury unit of measurement of pressure named after him. So that's where we get these terms. One atmosphere, one ATM of pressure equals 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as saying it equals 760 tor. Well, that gives you a little bit of insight into where these terms come from and how we get an atmospheric pressure. So I would like for you to take a moment and just do a quick conversion here. We know the conversion factors are up here. So this sample problem says how many atmospheres of pressure is a gas at 545 torr? So just pause the video and do this fairly quick calculation. Convert from 545 torr to atmospheres. And when you do this, I would like for you to take a moment to consider these numbers for 760 right here. It looks like there are two sig figs here, right? It looks like that zero is not significant. But we are going to treat these numbers as exact. They're not exact, but the numbers are much more precise than just two sig figs. And to show that precision would be would require me to put a decimal and show a lot of other numbers out here. But we're just going to treat these conversions, these conversion factors, as exact numbers. By which I mean my answer is going to be limited by my other term, my 545, and not by these. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video now and do that math.
Okay, coming back from pausing the video, we're going to do a fairly quick conversion here. We've got 545 Tor. And this is a simple dimensional analysis conversion. So I'm going to convert it to atmospheres. So I have a conversion factor here. Tor has to go on the bottom. Atmospheres to the top. What is the conversion between atmospheres and Tor? One atmosphere is 760 Tor. And I'm going to treat this as an exact number for the purposes of sig figs. So my answer should have three sig figs in it. So if I get my calculator, 545, and that's divided by 760 equals 0 0.717. Three sig figs because of that number, not because of this one. And there's my answer. Does the answer make sense? Yes, it's less than one atmosphere, and that is less than 760 Tor. So it appears to be about right. And that's how we do just a simple gas pressure conversion.